So let's get this right. Recently, we've seen Republicans vote against protecting access to contraception. They voted against marriage equality, which includes same-sex marriages and interracial marriages. They voted against the right to travel for abortion services. They voted against an amendment to the defense spending bill that would root out white supremacists and neo-Nazis in the U.S. military and in federal law enforcement. And while being against any and all gun reform, the Republican Party voted against an active shooter alert system, which would notify community members if there was a mass shooting happening nearby. And of course, a few months ago, the Republican Party voted against more funding for the FDA to ensure a baby formula shortage doesn't happen again in the future. And Republicans voted against a bill that would reduce price gouging and gas prices. Republican lawmaker Glenn Thompson out of Pennsylvania attended his gay son's wedding just three days after joining the majority of his GOP peeps in voting against a House bill that will codify federal protections for same-sex marriage. More on this bill in a second. That son confirmed to NBC News that he, quote, married the love of his life and that his father, Representative Thompson, was there. Thompson's press secretary, Madison Stone, also confirmed the congressman was in attendance, saying the Thompsons are very happy to welcome their new son-in-law into their family. And I believe this based on the speech that Thompson gave during his son's wedding reception. Listen. We're really fortunate uh, with uh, three sons and, uh, and uh a great job of adding to the family. <laughs> <laughs> now, according to Gawker, which broke the story, the Respect for Marriage Act is a years-old bill that would repeal the 1996 Defense of Marriage Act. Still, most Republicans did not support the measure. Some 75% of the House GOP voted against the bill. And if you wondered how lawmakers would respond when what they say in order to maintain power comes back to hit them in the mouth, see homophobic and anti-LGBTQ politicians who turned out to be queer themselves. So what is it? It can't be as simple as telling their base what they want to hear for the sake of votes. Do they believe that no matter what, they're above the law, nor will it touch their families? Are they so stone cold about their beliefs that nothing will stop them from upholding conservatism? I seriously don't know what the answer is because we see the same thing with Republicans who don't support marriage equality, yet are in interracial relationships themselves. And yeah, we can continue to blast Justice Clarence Thomas for omitting Loving v. Virginia from cases he would like to revisit after overturning Roe, seeing how his wife is white. With that said, maybe the people who claim that, for example, the Respect for Marriage Act is nothing more than an election year messaging stunt for Democrats in Congress who have failed to address historic inflation out of control prices at gas pumps and grocery stores are finding ways to take advantage of loopholes that we haven't noticed. Hey, Christian. Yeah, the Christian? Want to know something interesting? Sure. Did you know that DC has no trigger laws in reference to Roe v. Wade? Oh, so abortion is legal there and probably will be for some time. Yep. That is interesting. Indeed it is. Huh. You want to know something else interesting? Sure, other Christian. Well, what would be interesting is that I was somebody who worked part of the year in DC and then spent the rest of the year in my home state, which would be in the South, where abortion will shortly be illegal. That means that I could have my family back home south and maybe have, you know, some misconduct in D.C. and have it all cleared up with hush money. Yeah, in theory, if you were a person, whatever kind of people those are, who do work part time out of the year and were a giant hypocrite, you could do that. That is interesting that is interesting that's interesting it's actually not even interesting it's just kind of a little sad yeah what a nightmare for rebel hq i'm jeff wiggins my architect knows japanese